Sonoluminescence. Sonoluminescence is the emission of short bursts of light from imploding bubbles in a liquid when excited by sound. The sonoluminescence effect was first discovered at the University of Cologne in 1934 as a result of work on sonar. H. Frenzel and H. Schultz put an ultrasound transducer in a tank of photographic developer fluid. They hoped to speed up the development process. Instead, they noticed tiny dots on the film after developing and realized that the bubbles in the fluid were emitting light with the ultrasound turned on. It was too difficult to analyze the effect in early experiments because of the complex environment of a large number of short lived bubbles. This phenomenon is now referred to as multi bubble sonoluminescence. In 1960, Dr. Peter Jarman from Imperial College of London proposed the most reliable theory of SL phenomenon. The collapsing bubble generates an imploding shock wave that compresses and heats the gas at the center of the bubble to extremely high temperature. In 1989 an experimental advance was introduced by D. Felipe Gaetan and Lawrence Crum, who produced stable single bubble sonoluminescence. In SPSL, a single bubble trapped in an acoustic standing wave emits a pulse of light with each compression of the bubble within the standing wave. This technique allowed a more systematic study of the phenomenon because it isolated the complex effects into one stable, predictable bubble. It was realized that the temperature inside the bubble was hot enough to melt steel, as seen in an experiment done in 2012, the temperature inside the bubble as it collapsed reached about 12,000 kelvins. Interest in sonoluminescence was renewed when an inner temperature of such a bubble well above 1 million kelvins was postulated. This temperature is thus far not conclusively proven, rather, recent experiments conducted by the University of Illinois at Urbana, Champagne indicate temperatures around. Sonoluminescence can occur when a sound wave of sufficient intensity induces a gaseous cavity within a liquid to collapse quickly. This cavity may take the form of a pre existing bubble, or may be generated through a process known as cavitation. Sonoluminescence in the laboratory can be made to be stable, so that a single bubble will expand and collapse over and over again in a periodic fashion, emitting a burst of light each time it collapses. For this to occur, a standing acoustic wave is set up within a liquid, and the bubble will sit at a pressure antinode of the standing wave. The frequencies of resonance depend on the shape and size of the container in which the bubble is contained. Some facts about sonoluminescence. Spectral measurements have given bubble temperatures in the range from 2, the exact temperatures depending on experimental conditions including the composition of the liquid and gas. Detection of very high bubble temperatures by spectral methods is limited due to the opacity of liquids to short wavelength light characteristic of very high temperatures. Writing in Nature, chemists David J. Flanagan and Kenneth S. Suslick describe a method of determining temperatures based on the formation of plasmas. Using argon bubbles in sulfuric acid, their data show the presence of ionized molecular oxygen O, sulfur monoxide, and atomic argon populating high energy excited states which confirms a hypothesis that the bubbles have a hot plasma core. The ionization and excitation energy of dioxygenyl cations, which they observed, is 18 electron volts. From this they conclude the core temperatures reach at least 20,000 kelvins. The dynamics of the motion of the bubble is characterized to a first approximation by the rayleigh plesset equation. This is an approximate equation that is derived from the Navier-Stokes equations and describes the motion of Theridius of the bubble R as a function of time t. Here, mu is the viscosity, p the pressure, and gamma the surface tension. The over dots represent time derivatives. This equation, though approximate, has been shown to give good estimates on the motion of the bubble under the acoustically driven field except during the final stages of collapse. Both simulation and experimental measurement show that during the critical final stage soft collapse, the bubble wall velocity exceeds the speed of sound of the gas inside the bubble. Thus a more detailed analysis of the bubble's motion is needed beyond rayleigh plesset to explore the additional energy focusing that an internally formed shock wave might produce. The mechanism of the phenomenon of sonoluminescence is unknown. Hypotheses include, hotspot, brain strahlung radiation, collision-induced radiation and corona discharges, non-classical light, proton tunneling, electrodynamic jets and fractoluminescent jets. In 2002, M. Brenner, S. Ilkenfeld, and D. Los published a 60-page review that contains a detailed explanation of the mechanism. An important factor is that the bubble contains mainly inert noble gas such as argon or xenon and varying amounts of water vapor. Chemical reactions cause nitrogen and oxygen to be removed from the bubble after about 100 expansion collapse cycles. The bubble will then begin to emit light. 
The light emission of highly compressed noble gas is exploited technologically in the argon flash devices. During bubble collapse, the inertia of the surrounding water causes high pressure and high temperature, reaching around 10,000 kelvins in the interior of the bubble, causing the ionization of a small fraction of the noble gas present. The amount ionized is small enough for the bubble to remain transparent, allowing volume emission. Surface emission would produce more intense light of longer duration, dependent on wavelength, contradicting experimental results. Electrons from ionized atoms interact mainly with neutral atoms, causing thermal brain straw lung radiation. As the wave hits a low energy trough, the pressure drops, allowing electrons to recombine with atoms and light emission to cease due to this lack of free electrons. This makes for a 160 picosecond light pulse for argon. This description is simplified from the literature above, which details various steps of differing duration from 15 microseconds to 100 picoseconds. Computations based on the theory presented in the review produce radiation parameters that match experimental results with errors no larger than expected due to some simplifications, so it seems the phenomenon of zonal luminescence is at least roughly explained, although some details of the process remain obscure. Any discussion of sonoluminescence must include a detailed analysis of metastability. Sonoluminescence in this respect is what is physically termed a bounded phenomenon meaning that the sonoluminescence exists in a bounded region of parameter space for the bubble, a coupled magnetic field being one such parameter. The magnetic aspects of sonoluminescence are very well documented. An unusually exotic hypothesis of sonoluminescence, which has received much popular attention, is the Casimir energy hypothesis suggested by noted physicist Julian Schwinger and more thoroughly considered in a paper by Claudia Eberlein of the University of Sussex. Eberlein's paper suggests that the light and sonoluminescencies generated by the vacuum within the bubble in a process similar to Hawking radiation, the radiation generated at the event horizon of black holes. According to this vacuum energy explanation, since quantum theory holds that vacuum contains virtual particles, the rapidly moving interface between water and gas converts virtual photons into real photons. This is related to the Unruh effect or the Casimir effect. The argument has been made that sonoluminescence releases too large an amount of energy and releases the energy on too short a time scale to be consistent with the vacuum energy explanation, although other credible sources argued the vacuum energy explanation might yet prove to be correct. Some have argued that the rayleigh plesset equation described above is unreliable for predicting bubble temperatures and that actual temperatures in sonoluminescing systems can be far higher than 20,000 kelvins. Some research claims to have measured temperatures as high as 100,000 kelvins, and speculates temperatures cooled reach into the millions of kelvins. Temperatures this high could cause thermonuclear fusion. This possibility is sometimes referred to as bubble fusion and is likened to the implosion design used in the fusion component of thermonuclear weapons. On January 27, 2006, researchers at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute claimed to have produced fusion and sonoluminescence experiments. Experiments in 2002 and 2005 by R.P. Tailyark and using deuterated acetone showed measurements of tritium and neutron output consistent with fusion. However, the papers were considered low quality and there were doubts cast by a report about the author's scientific misconduct. This made the report lose credibility among the scientific community. Pistol shrimp produce a type of sonoluminescence from a collapsing bubble caused by quickly snapping its claw. The animal snaps a specialized claw shut to create a cavitation bubble that generates acoustic pressures of up to 80 kPa at a distance of 4 cm from the claw. As it extends out from the claw, the bubble reaches speeds of 60 miles per hour and releases a sound reaching 218 decibels. The pressure is strong enough to kill small fish. The light produced is of lower intensity than the light produced by typical sonoluminescence and is not visible to the naked eye. The light and heat produced may have no direct significance, as it is the shock wave produced by the rapidly collapsing bubble which these shrimp use to stun or kill prey. However, it is the first known instance of an animal producing light by this effect and was whimsically dubbed shrimp luminescence upon its discovery in 2001. It has subsequently been discovered that another group of crustaceans, the mantis shrimp, contains species whose club-like forelimes scan strike so quickly and with such force as to induce sonoluminescent cavitation bubbles upon impact. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.